In 1988, the World Health Assembly adopted a resolution for the worldwide eradication of polio, the virus, and the disease. Cases of paralytic polio have decreased by over 99% since then, from an estimated 350,000 cases to 12 reported cases in 2023. But this apparent success belies the fact that today, thousands of cases of polio are caused by the Sabin oral polio vaccine, OPV. This vaccine is used in the eradication effort. OPV is genetically unstable, and it leads to paralytic disease in about one to one and a half million doses. I was therefore surprised to read an opinion piece by Richard Conniff in the New York Times entitled, The End of Polio is in Sight. What have we learned? Mr. Conniff writes, quote, The good news is that we are now on the cusp of eradicating this terrible disease everywhere and forever, end quote. This statement led me to write a letter to Mr. Conniff explaining why the end of polio is not in sight. Let me read it to you. Dear Mr. Conniff, I recently read your opinion piece in the New York Times entitled The End of Polio in Sight, What Has We Learned? As a virologist who did laboratory research on polio virus for over 40 years, I would like to highlight some important aspects of polio virus biology that you and others overlook and which make eradication of polio ultimately impossible. Additionally, I would like to correct the hypothesis that, quote, a big part of this success, reduction in cases of paralytic poliomyelitis, is due to the use of the Sabin oral vaccine rather than the Salk injectable vaccine, end quote. Between 1955, the year of licensure of the Salk injectable polio vaccine, and the 1962 approval of the Sabin oral vaccine, OPV, the number of paralytic cases went from 29,000 to 900 in the U.S. alone, a reduction of greater than 95%. The use of OPV further reduced the number of cases and was therefore favored for the eradication campaign. OPV is easier to administer, has a lower production cost, and an inability to lead to another cutter episode in which improperly inactivated vaccine caused an outbreak of paralytic disease. However, one should consider the association of vaccine-associated paralytic polio, the cutter event of OPV. Both wild-type and vaccine-derived virus infections can lead to the development of the same clinical disease, paralytic poliomyelitis. This observation makes differentiation between the terms wild-type poliovirus and vaccine-derived poliovirus a semantic argument. Continued use of the terms is confusing to the public and provides ammunition for vaccine hesitancy. More than 99% of poliovirus infections are asymptomatic. These patients, as well as those who develop paralytic disease, shed infectious virus in their stool. Therefore, unlike smallpox, in which asymptomatic individuals did not play a role in virus transmission, the majority of poliovirus transmission is a consequence of asymptomatic infections. Therefore, tracking cases of paralytic disease is not the same as monitoring poliovirus circulation. The term polio can refer to both the virus, poliovirus, and the paralytic disease poliomyelitis. It's used ambiguously in your article. Though it's possible to eliminate paralytic disease caused by polio infection, it's not possible to put an end to poliovirus circulation. Instead, we should accept and learn to live with continued virus circulation and emphasize the need to retain high vaccine coverage. The recent detections of poliovirus in sewage in Egypt, Gaza, and Hungary and are all in areas declared virus-free before 2019. While no cases of paralytic polio were reported in Egypt and Hungary, one case of severe disease in a 10-month unvaccinated child was identified in Gaza. Similar to reported outbreaks of hepatitis A, dysentery, and other diseases prevented by vaccination, the inability to vaccinate in wartime is not a polio-specific problem. Detections in Egypt and Hungary demonstrate that poliovirus eradication is not possible, but severe disease can be controlled. Therefore, investing in the infrastructure necessary for ascertaining and retaining high vaccine coverage and combating the anti-vaccine sentiment 
is what is required. These data confirm why the polio virus vaccine is one of the most important vaccines given and why vaccination against the virus should not be stopped. By continuing to perpetuate the myth of polio eradication and that one vaccine is better than the other, one undermines science and trust in public health, as well as provides continuous ammunition to the anti-vaccine movement that vaccines are necessary or beneficial for human health. That vaccines are not necessary or beneficial for human health. Both IPV and OPV prevent neuroinvasion of the virus, and it's in, it is inhibition of this event that is necessary to eliminate paralytic disease. Vaccines prevent the development of severe disease, not virus transmission or infection. Based on this discussion, it's clear that eradication of polio virus will never be achieved, and control of the disease only will occur in countries where vaccination coverage continues to be greater than 90%. It's important to understand that the continued use of OPV will never lead to eradication of poliovirus, as was originally thought. The fact that this vaccine also paralyzes children makes its use unethical. The right thing to do now would be to abandon OPV and switch to using IPV, which has been done in many countries, including the United States. <laughs>